How do you feel this morning? Much better, thank you, sir. Fine. You were sort of groggy for a couple of days, but that seems to be clearing up. Let's see how you can walk this morning, hmm? Try, sir. We'll try. It's shaky. That passes off. By the way, I don't think I know your name. Neither do I, sir. Don't you know who I am? That's why I tried my little experiment just now. I thought maybe if I popped it at you without warning, you'd just answer, and that'd be that. But you must know. My dog tag. You didn't have any dog tag when they brought you in. It must have been blown off. That's what makes it so tough. That'll be all for now, nurse. Help him back to his deck chair, please. Yes, Major. I'll be a few moments, nurse. Yes, Major. I'll give it to you from the beginning, at least as much as we know. Maybe that'll help. You know where you are? On a hospital ship. Right. And uh, you know where you were? No, sir. Well, let's start from there, then. When we were driving for Paris, the Nazis got together every bit of armor they could spare and hit our line south of the Seine. They broke through on a half-mile front, cut off quite a few men. One small group took cover in an old farmhouse, held them off for two days. We could see the whole thing through our field glasses, but we couldn't get help through to you. Then I was one of the men in that farmhouse? Mm-hmm. Second day, one of their dive bombers got through and blew the house to bits. That afternoon, we attacked and smashed them back. When the medical corpsmen searched the ruins, they found that there'd been only four men in that house. Three of them were in such bad shape, they just collected their dog tags and buried them. Fourth man was you. Then my dog tag was missing? No, not missing, uh, exactly. It had been blown off you. Just as theirs had been blown off then. I got the four of them right here. All you have to do is take a look at them. When you see your own name, you'll know it. Paul Gregor. That doesn't mean anything. Carl Wynowski. Joseph Loring. Peter Anderson. Anderson. Peter Anderson. None of them means a thing to you. Not a thing. Well, now, don't let it worry you. We'll get a message through to Washington and get all available information on these men. Fight, wait, the works. In the meantime, as I said before, don't let it worry you. Don't let it worry you. Major Williams will see you now. Thank you. Tall are you? About 5'11"? Yes, sir. Weigh about 180. Hmm? Yes, sir. McGregor was 5 feet 10 and a half. Loring and Granovsky were 5 feet 11. Anderson was 6 feet. They were all within a few pounds of what you weigh. I'm afraid we don't know any more than we did. We'll have to let the whole thing go until we land. Then we'll forward your fingerprints and the army will get all the dope it can. You may be sure of that. Yes, sir. I have your travel orders here. We land in a couple of days. These will take you to a hospital where we'll find out who you really are. Meantime, we don't want to call you by a number. We'd better find you a name. Yes, sir.
How about John? Johnny? Okay. Johnny what? Johnny March. How's that, sir? Good. Thank you, sir. That's all. What is it, Johnny? About those four men, sir. If I'm one of them, could I have a list of their names and addresses? I think if I study them... Certainly. Take this along. Work over it, Johnny. Thanks. in our quartet. Come on down here and make with the pipes. Okay. See you later. Who's going to take the lead? Okay. Okay. Oh, we no more, my lady. Oh, we no more today. Bob McGregor, Joseph Lord, Carl Gronowski, Peter Anderson, Richard Chester, Chicago, Oxford. guys later. Okay, Sammy. Hey, Pablo, where's the guy I was sitting with? When the train stopped, he jumped off. He got off the train? Why didn't you stop him? Stop him? Why should I? I bet he's going AWOL. Who's going AWOL, soldier? Huh? You heard what I said. Who's going AWOL? I don't know what you're talking about. All I said is all is well, all is well. Stop stalling. I heard you the first time. Start talking. Did Mac, did he 
ask you to come and see me? No, it was my own idea. I just happened to be passing through, and I... I'm glad you did. Were you with him when... Yes. Did he... Did his knee bother him much? Well... Sometimes on a long march. Uh... Dolly, come out, come out, wherever you are. In here, kids. Jane and Judy McIntyre. They work at the same plant I do. Oh. They're sharing the house with me. I'm so hungry I could... I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. I'd like you to meet Johnny March. He's... He was a friend of Max in France. Oh, how do you do? Hello. Hello. I've got a rush now. I, I'm on the swing shift. But there are a lot of things I'd like to talk to you about. Or maybe you'd like to go home. Home? Well, so do you never find a room in this man's town. Perhaps you'd like to stay here tonight. The couch is really more comfortable than a park bench. Oh, I don't want to barge in. I'd give you any trouble. I... Oh, please stay, Mr. Marsh. Judy will get some blankets and I'll see you tomorrow. Spoil me, Johnny March. I'm not used to having things done for me anymore. I'll get it. I'll pour the coffee. Time to have to go to work. This is my night off. Oh, you're going to take it easy, huh? You can call cooking dinner and sewing, ironing, and doing odd jobs around the house taking it easy. Well, maybe you ought to go out to dinner. Go out to dinner? Yeah. I haven't been out in months. That's what I figured. That's why I said I thought maybe you ought to go out. All right. I'd love to have dinner with you. Swell. one to want you to. I don't know. It, Mac didn't have much time for fun during the six months we were married. Six months? Didn't Mac tell you? He owned a fleet of trucks and his work kept him so busy on the road that we hardly had time to get used to each other when... Oh, there are the Bartlett's. Mr. Bartlett gave Mac his first job. Do you want to ask them to sit down? Let's. Hello, Mrs. Bartlett. Mac. Sally. When did he get back? Oh, Sally, I'm sorry. Perhaps you'll excuse us. Uh, we're having dinner with the... Uh, over there. Come, Martha. You see, Johnny, I shouldn't have come here. Don't let a thing like that bother you. It's no use. You'd better take me home. All right, Sally. I'm 
sorry about what happened tonight, Sally. Don't worry, Johnny. I'll see you in the morning. Don't go. I want to talk to you. I don't feel like talking now. Oh, you've got to snap out of this. I tried to. And you saw what happened. Sure, I saw what happened. I saw you quit. Quit without a fight. And now what do you want to do? You want to move out of town. Give up your friends. Give up your home. Because it reminds you of Mac. Sally, it should remind you of Mac. He fought for this. He gave his life so that you could live here. Oh, please, Sally, listen to me. You can't stop living just because you were hurt. These surroundings are part of you. Part of your life. You've got to love them again. The pictures that Mac helped you hang. And the chair next to the fireplace where he always smoked his pipe. Mac and his pipe. He never was without it, was he? Oh, that isn't the point. I, I'm just trying to show Answer you. Answer me, Johnny. Answer me. You lied to me. You never knew Mac. He never smoked a pipe in his life. Oh, please, Sally. Got no right to. Why are you still here? If you had one bit of decency, you'd go. It's a good thing I didn't go. A good thing. That's because you knew my husband so well, isn't it? You and he were buddies. I was sitting on the front porch writing you a note when I heard the garage doors open. I don't have to give you that note now because I'm going to tell you about it. You're not going to tell me anything. I've heard enough from you already. Sally, you've got to listen. Oh, no, I don't. Please, Sally. Why don't you go home? Home? I thought this might be my home. It's a laugh. What are you talking about? You think I'm a phony, don't you? But I had to come here, Sally. I had to find out something. See, I... I've got a smashed up life to rebuild, and... So have you. What have you got to rebuild? You came back. All you have to do now is pick up where you left off. And... <laughs> It'd be swell if I knew where I left off. Meaning? Meaning, there... 
There really isn't any such person as Johnny March. He might have been Paul McGregor. And now... He may be Joseph Loring of Chester, West Virginia. Carl Granowski of Chicago, Illinois. Or Peter Anderson from Knoxville, Iowa. Sounds all mixed up, just like I am. See, it started in France, just after the invasion. Then your next stop is Chester, West Virginia? Yep. When do you think you'll be showing off? Tomorrow. The sooner I learn about my past, the sooner I can start my future. Johnny. This isn't easy to say, but... Everything. Better come in and get ready if he wants that lift to New York. Stan will be here in a few minutes. All right. Yes, it is. We'd better go, Johnny. you? They told me you wouldn't come, but I knew different. Of course you did. Where is your mother? Is she, is she home? No, she's working at the hospital. Will she be home soon? In a little while. And oh, Daddy, I'm so glad you've come back. <laughs> Positively enormous. You know about? I haven't ruined that word yet. What's it mean? It means you've grown so big I I doubt if I'd recognize you. You you haven't told me how your mother is. Pretty well, I suppose. She used to cry a lot at night and wake me up, but now I have my own room. Daddy! Daddy!
Just like you left it, isn't it, Daddy? Will you work here all the time, not just nights? Why do you ask that? Well, Mommy said you did your best work here. She did? These are your pictures, aren't they, Daddy? Say, this is all right. It's good, isn't it? Huh? When nobody was here, Daddy, I used to look at these pictures. You did? Which one do you like the best? I like this one. I'm building a house just like it. You are? It's a real pretty one, isn't it? You bet it is. I'd like to live in a house like that. You would? Of course, I never touch it without I wash my hands real careful first, and I dried them real good, too. Let's look at the rest of the pictures, Daddy. You bet, son. Designed for living, fascist style. Condemnation proceedings to take precedence over all other work. What does it mean, Daddy? It's very simple, son. A lot of things had gone wrong because a lot of people thought wrong. And we had to straighten out their thinking for them and fix the wrong things they had done. So little boys like you would have a place like that to play in, houses like that to live in. Like you have to get all the weeds out of the garden before I can grow things? Roger. And did you do it, Daddy? Did you fix all the bad things? Well, it isn't a job anyone can do by himself. I helped a little, I hope. And you see, it was a big job, and many people helped. But it'll take a long time before all the bad things are fixed. situation, Miss Carew, and a difficult one to explain. You see, Toddy and I were talking it over and we weren't quite through, so if you could give us a few more minutes together. But I don't see why... I assure you it'll be all right. Well, a few minutes then. Thank you. Yeah, there's nothing to cry about. You're a big boy. But why did you tell me you were my daddy? Well, it's like this, Toddy. Daddy sort of sent me to you. Well, he was one of the finest, bravest men in the whole world. And I want you to always remember that. He was a good soldier, and good soldiers don't cry. And you've got to be a good soldier. You have a job. Roger. That's the boy. All right, let's go. Don't go. I want you to stay. I have to go, Tony. I've got a job to do, too. Come on, fellow.
Are you looking for someone? Sort of. Can I help you? I'm afraid not. Thanks, Annie. Sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for the Granovskis. Granovskis? They don't live here anymore. Oh. Uh, we don't know them. One of them went into the army, and his brother moved away just before he came in here. I wonder if by any chance you, you know where they moved to. Uh, Leo, uh, come here a minute. I'm sorry to put you in all this trouble. Now what is it? Always you got some... Fine thing, Maria. Keeping a soldier standing outside our door? Where's your manners? Ask him in. I just wanted some information. I'm looking for the Grunowskis. Well, there is only one of them left. That is Joe, the younger one. He works by Frank Sarako's on uh, Rush Street. 530, I think the number is. Did you know him? Well, I met the young one once or twice. Carl the older was in the army. Took care of his brother for a long time. And then, besides, he had La Chance Renza. What is that? I don't know how you say it. It means like uh, healing hands. He used to take care of things that are sick. Dogs, cats, birds. I remember we had a man like that in the old country. In our village, we thought he was better than any doctor. I see. Well, thank you very much. You're maybe, welcome. Maybe uh, you like I fix a cup of tea for you and a nice piece of comic, eh? Thank you, but I'm, I'm sort of in a hurry. Goodbye. So long, soldier. Goodbye, soldier. Uh, what'll it be, friend? Looking for Joe Granowski. Is he around? Yeah. He's in the back room through there. Thanks. Dick and Hialeah, Indian Summer, Colombo, Gadget. Looking for someone, soldier? Yes. Joe Grunowski. Over there, first window, but he's kind of busy right now. I just... Did you know his brother by any chance? Sure I did. He worked for me two years before he went in the army. Why? Hey, wait a minute. Was you a friend of Carl's? In a way. In France. Hey, Joe. Joe, come here a minute. Anything to matter, boss? Uh-huh. I want you to meet up with... Uh, what'd you say your name was, soldier? March. John March. I'm Frankie Sirocco, and this is Joe Kornowski. Hello, Joe. He was with Carl in France. You were with Carl? Hello, Frankie. How's tricks? Hi, Rox. Hello, boys. Hi. Hello, Mr. Donnelly. 
I better get back to the window and stick it. around, kid. Boys can get along without you. But the, the last trace. I said started. stick around. Something I want to talk to you two about. But it can wait till the customers leave. Donnelly's her name. Rox Donnelly. John March. Oh. This is indeed a pleasure, Mr. March. Well, Frankie, while we're waiting, how about a little liquid refreshment, huh? Sure, Rox. What'll it be, soldier? I'll have beer. I'll have a straight bourbon. Same here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, give Mr. March his beer. Me and the boys will have three milks. Now, wait a minute, Rox. Just because your liver's kicking up. Shut up. What's it all about? Pay no attention to these characters, Frankie. They're beefing on account of giving a little blood. Who's beefing about giving blood? They wouldn't let me in the army on account of this liver of mine, so I had to find other ways to help out. Giving blood is one of them. And Rox Donnelly don't do nothing halfway. When me or my boys gives blood, it's nothing but the finest quality and in the A1 condition. So for one week before we give, all alcoholic beverages are strictly out. I said three milks. Hey, Jake. Sit down, Johnny. One beer and three milks. Okay, boss. Well, Rox, what's on your mind? Oh, nothing very much. Just the 6,000 bucks you owe me. What are you talking about? Well, unless I've been very badly misinformed, Green Gremlin comes in at five to one in a fourth race last Tuesday with a thousand bucks of mine on her nose. Here's a slip. Joe, get me last Tuesday's book. There's no need to, Frankie. It's not in there. Well, you can say that again. But what I want to know is... Hey. Wait a minute. That's right. I did it. Rox met me on the street and... Gave me the money to put on Green Gremlin. I needed that money. And I had a hot tip on another horse. So I gave Rox the slip. Never entered it in the book and put the dough on my horse. But Green Gremlin won. Oh, you dirty double-crossing <laughs> lumpy nigger. Take your hands off me. Ah, oh, the soldier's right, Frankie. Rough stuff ain't gonna get you no place. I put down a grand and my horse won. I don't care who pays me, but I want the six grand that's coming to me, and I want it now. Keep your shirt on. You'll get your dough. This is what I get for getting mixed up with a guy who's... Look out! Look out! Just that Come on, Rox. Let's get out of He's been hit twice in the shoulder and the chest. Somebody get an ambulance, quick. Who is this character? Danny Partridge. One of Reynolds' monkeys. Why would Spade be sending a guy around to put the heat on Joe? He wasn't at the Joe. Me. You see, Frankie, I ain't been making any secret how I felt about that dough you owe me. Wants to give Spade an idea. He figures if he can work this deal, it'll look like you and me had an altercation and you plugged me. Well, boys, guess we got a job to do. Let's get going. Okay. Oh, uh... You better bring little Rollo. We may need him. It'll be a pleasure. Come on, unconscious. How do you feel, Joe? Not so good. Take it easy. The ambulance will be here in a few minutes. I always wanted to ride in an ambulance. Only... Only what, Joe? Would you do me a favor? Sure I will. Just in case... In case things don't work out so good, will you come to the hospital with me? You bet I will. I don't get it. I can't figure the angle. Can't figure what angle? Well, Joe ain't crooked, I'll swear to that. But this deal that he's trying to pull on me is more than a kid. Rest him easy. That's doctor talk for a guy being out like a light. But they'll call us when he comes to. Hey, Rux, what's with the grim? Uh-oh. I guess I bumped into a door. I don't suppose nothing was happening to Spade Reynolds while all this was going on. Reynolds? I don't think I ever heard of the gentleman. Mr. March? Yes? You can come in for a few moments now. We just finished getting the information for the police reports. He's been asking for you. Thanks. Uh, how about us? Well, he's not very strong yet, but I guess it'll be all right. Well, Joe, looks like everything's okay. Yeah. Just my luck. 
Say, look here, kid, there's something I gotta know. Was you aware of the fact that Spade had a guy looking for me? No, not till I saw a guy standing there with a gun in his hand. Well, then why did you yell? If you'd have kept still and let him burn me down, you wouldn't have to worry about the six grand. Why did I do it? I guess it's just that I'm a sucker. You think the guy that thinks enough of something to stop lead is a sucker? Don't you? I'm just wondering about your brother. You keep him out of this. Carl took care of both of us until he went in the army. Just before he left, he told me he was fighting for a right. His right to become a doctor so he could help me. And look what it got him. I figured one chump like that in the family was enough. Well, if you had it figured out that way, why did you look out for me, a guy who just tried to double cross? I just told you why. Because I'm a sucker. A chump. If you hadn't stopped them bullets, rocks would have been colder and a pair of Eskimos' ankles. And then nobody would have owed nobody nothing. Right, Rox? Right. And as far as I'm concerned, if I may be permitted to borrow a phrase of my good friend Frankie, that's the way it is. That don't nobody owe nobody nothing. Check. And when you get out of here, Joe, your old job will be waiting for you. Uh, you better throw in with me, kid, where you'll be appreciated. What's the matter, Joe? I don't feel so good. Did I say something wrong? No, Rox. I think Joe wants to do something different. What do you mean? I think he might want to be a doctor. How did you know that? Well, that's what Carl wanted. And I figured you'd want to take up where he left off. Yeah, but... Oh, how could I? College and medical school, uh, that takes a lot of money. Well, don't worry about that, young fellow. That'll be my department. And say, listen, uh, while you're studying all that stuff, will you learn something about livers? Like any right-thinking businessman, I've got to figure on getting some return on my investment. And it's a funny thing about my liver. I'm it... sorry, but you'll have to go now. Oh, yes, miss. Yeah. Uh, so long, kid. Be seeing you. Be seeing you. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. I want you to know. Don't try to talk anymore. So long. Where are you going from here, Johnny? I'm going... Oh. And where's that? Knoxville Island. We ain't leaving tonight, are you? Yeah, just as soon as I get a bite to eat. Well, how about having dinner at my place? Well, I... You gotta eat someplace. I'm gonna throw a party. I want you to meet my girlfriend anyway. Well, bring him along, Frankie. Okay, Rox. Gentlemen, I wish to propose a toast to Rox Donnelly. Here's to your good health, Rox. Thanks. And aren't we glad you still got it? <laughs> oh, Wanda, I want you to meet Johnny March. Johnny, I want you to meet Wanda. Hello. And make sure he enjoys himself. See you later. Hello. I've been watching you, soldier. Would you like a light? Please. And I get the general idea that you're not having such a good time. To tell you the truth, I was just leaving. I'll stick around. I was getting a little bored myself. Rox tells me you just got back from overseas. Yes, I did. Well, after what you've been through, doesn't this sort of thing make you just a little sore? Well, parties are the thing that guys overseas dream about. What else do they dream about, soldier? Well... This isn't exactly the place to talk about dreams. I can do something about that. Come on. Come on. Tell me about those dreams. Well, they're, they're not easy to tell. Well, we have plenty of time. Or have we? How long are you going to be in Chicago? Not long. Well, that's too bad. Why? Because I like you. You don't even know who I am. Well, is that necessary? Well, it'd be kind of nice if 
What does this mean? <laughs> well, I don't get that one at all. Well, look, Miss Wanda, I'm not trying to be mysterious. Come on, soldier. There's a girl somewhere, isn't there? Why do you say that? There's a telephone out there. Why don't you go call her up? Well, I'm in Chicago and she's in Connecticut. Rox won't mind. He can afford it. Maybe this has been said before, but women are funny. <laughs> Come on, don't give me any more arguments. Go on in there and phone her. Mrs. Sally McGregor at Bridgeton, Connecticut. That's right, Bridgeton. B-R-I-D-G-E-T-O-N. Hello? Hello, ready with your party. Hello, Hello Sally. Who is it? Anything. No, but there's only one more name left on the list, and that must be it. You mean Anderson in Knoxville, Iowa? Sally, you remembered. I remember lots of things, Johnny. Sally, would you... Would you come out to Knoxville to meet me there? But, Johnny, I... I didn't want to have to say it exactly this way, but... I don't have to tell you that I love you, do I? You know that already. You must have known it the day I left. Johnny, darling, you're forgetting something, aren't you? A kind of important something? You don't even know yet whether you're married or not. I can't be. Why not? Well, I just can't be. It wouldn't be right. Well, if you were only here, I could tell you, or maybe I wouldn't have to tell you. But this isn't a magazine story, Johnny. In real life, things don't always work out the way they're supposed to. I know. I guess you're right. I, I'll have to go see. It's the best way. Then when I get home, I'll, I'll call you again. I'll be waiting, Johnny. Bye. Is everything okay? It's going to be. That's great. I'm like one of those Kipling characters who can fix things for everybody but themselves. You don't want to go back in there, do you? I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I've got a long way to go. So I better get going. Well, then don't bother to say goodbye. The library's in there. The elevator's across the hall. Good luck, soldier. So long.
Oh, nothing. I... I'm sorry about all this. It wasn't your fault. You see, we had a son about your age. For a long time, he was missing in action. Last week, we got official notice. Hobo's the one that's to blame. He was Peter's dog. And when I saw him jumping on you, I forgot he acts like that towards every soldier. Thanks, Dad. You look tired, boy. Have you come a long way? I have come a long way. We were just going to sit down for supper. You'll stay and have a bite, won't you? Well, I... Oh, of course you will. Sit right there. Yeah. I'll have supper ready in a minute. Dad, call Harry. Yes, Mother. Harry! Supper! Serve the stew, Dad. Hello, Harry. Hello. This is... You didn't tell us your name, son. John March. This is Johnny March. And this is Harry Parker. Hello, Harry. Harry works for us. All right, Dad. Dear Lord, inasmuch as this food of which we are about to partake comes to us out of thine infinite loving kindness, grant that for what we are about to receive, we shall be truly grateful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Truly grateful for nothing. Harry. I've always been one for speaking what was in my mind, and I ain't gonna stop doing it now. I've told you you have nothing to worry about, haven't I? Chuck Walters will pay you more than I'm paying you now. Please, Dad. We have a guest. I'm sorry. Don't let me stop. Mother's right. It's just that, well, we don't have much company, and I guess I've let my manners get sort of rusty. I should say you'd have a lot of guests if you invited everybody as casually as you did me. Especially not knowing anything about me or who I am. You wear the same uniform my boy wore, son. That's enough for Dad and me. You knew Peter, didn't you? Yes. I, I was with him in France when he, he was killed. Mr. Anderson told me. Yes, we knew. We received a telegram last week. It's just that Peter and his father were so close. I knew you had something to do with Peter. I was afraid to say it, but I knew. And when it came, was it quick? He didn't suffer a single instant. I know how difficult it must be for you to talk about it, especially when you're so tired. Would you like to go out and sit on the porch for a while with Dad? Or would you rather go to your room? My room? You're staying overnight, aren't you? Well, to tell you the truth, I, I hadn't planned and... Are they expecting you someplace else? No. Then you will stay, won't you? As a favor to us. I'd love to, thanks. Good. Now finish your supper, and I'll look after Dad. I guess the Andersons were pretty cut up when they heard about the death of their son, weren't they? Yeah, she's quieted down a bit now, but Anderson ain't been the same since it happened. He just don't seem to give a hoot about anything anymore. That's why he's getting rid of the place. Selling out? Yeah. Tomorrow, lock, stock, and barrel. They're moving into town. Mrs. Anderson don't want to go. Neither do I. We've argued with him for hours at a time, but it, it don't do no good. Certainly in a hurry, wasn't he? He says the sooner the better. That's cause everything about the place reminds him of the boy. Finished, son? Yes, thanks. How's Mr. Anderson? He's all right. He isn't as young as he used to be, and things upset him more somehow. I've certainly caused a lot of trouble around here, haven't I? First you, and then Mr. Anderson. Don't you give it another thought. We're glad you came. For a lot of reasons. I'm thinking you need a little rest, Johnny. 
Thanks. I am sorry. This was Peter's room. in the country the day he won that 4-H prize. Rest well, son. It got you down, hasn't it? It's a little hard to have people walking around your house and pawing your things. I know now I made a mistake. I guess I'll just sit up here out of the way until it's over. I guess you all know why we're here without any long palaver from me. All I need to remind you is that we're selling the Anderson Farm. The finest farm in the county. The best equipment, the best furniture, and the finest collection of livestock for 100 miles around. And we'll start with the house furnishings piece by piece. And when they're disposed of, we'll move on to the farm equipment. Just a minute, please. What do you want? This auction has to get started. I'd like to say a word to these folks before this sale takes place. We ain't got any time for that now. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was about to say, Let's hear what the soldier has to say, Sid. Thanks. It's just that I don't think this auction should be held. I know that Mr. Anderson decided to sell this farm, but when he made that decision, he wasn't himself. I think you all know the reason why. You see, this just wasn't a farm to him. It was something far more precious, something that he and his son had built together. Now that son is gone. But as long as this farm endures, something of that boy will remain to give hope and consolation to two hearts. His father's and his mother's. Mr. Anderson doesn't see it that way now, but he will. For there isn't anything more important in the whole world than the love of a mother and a father for a boy that's gone. Unless it's the happiness they may still find in keeping faith with that boy's ideals. Especially when keeping faith with those ideals means helping to feed the millions of hungry kids that are waiting for the things this farm can produce. Very good, very good indeed. But this sale is going to go through just the way we planned it. And now, folks, I want to call your attention to this beautiful chair over here, trimmed in solid gold and oak. I saw the invoice on this myself, and I don't mind telling you, the Andersons paid a pretty penny for it. Yes, sir. Made by the best manufacturers in Grand Rapids. Who'll make me an offer? It's in first-class condition. Come, come, Lamb. How about you? You could use this chair over there.
don't cry, Mrs. Anderson. Nothing's going to be settled. You're going to stay right here where you belong. I guess I don't have to tell you that I'm grateful for what you did. You've both been very kind. I just want to say that... I'll get it. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. Johnny, it's for you. For me? Yes. Hello? What? I'll be right over. Mr. Anderson, can I borrow your truck for a little while, please? Sure, son. Just in the driveway. Thanks. You, honey, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter, but it does. Yes, it does matter. It does matter who I am, doesn't it? You said it, bub. You speaking to me? I'm speaking to the guy that was driving that jalopy over every part of the road in which he don't belong. Who cut every curve and disregarded every intersection. You know what the score is. We'll start with your driver's license. Driver's license. I don't have any, at least with me. You're making it swell for yourself, aren't you? Suppose we go see the judge now, and you can tell your story to the both of us at the same time. Please, not now. I just got here a couple of minutes ago and came all the way from Connecticut, and I... Anything the matter, officer? No, uh, at least nothing I can't handle. Just one of your boys driving without a license and violating every speed law in the book. Where are you from? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Let me see your papers. Papers? I haven't any. A-W-O-L, huh? This is getting good. Well, if you guys will just keep your shirts on for a couple of minutes, I might be able to explain things. Maybe you won't have to. What's your name? Johnny March. That's what they call me. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, officer, but the Army has first call on this man. We've been looking for you for about a week. Looking for me? March John. It says here you disappeared off the train on your way to a hospital without having been officially discharged. You better come along with us and talk to the CO. Please, may I come too? Well, I don't... What know. I always say, there's a feminine touch always gums things up good. Sally, you better take the truck back to the Andersons. It's out in front. Come on. Thanks, officer. It's okay. And I didn't think I was actually doing anything wrong, sir. Jumping off your train, not notifying your commanding officer of your whereabouts for one week? See, I was just trying to establish my identity. That's the Army's job, not yours. Private March, you are AWOL. And until I receive further information regarding you, you will be confined to the guardhouse. Yes. Mr. 
McGregor. I'd like you to be Major Brown of the Medical Corps. How do you do? Know you. Major Brown is a psychiatrist. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. We sent for you, Mrs. McGregor. You found out who he is? Yes, we know who he is. But before we tell him, we'd like to try to make him find out for himself. It's better if he remembers. We asked you to come in so that when we question him, it won't appear in the nature of a test. Private March is here, sir. Send him in. Yes, sir. At ease. Thanks. Sir. Private March, just before you came in, we were having a little discussion. Perhaps you can settle it for us. Do you know the date of the Austrian succession? 1740. And how about the Council of Nicaea? That was 325 A.D. And do you happen to know just why you remember those dates? Well, after all, I should have. I was a professor of history at... Sally, I... Then you do remember who you are? Yes, sir. And your fingerprints verify the report beyond doubt, Captain. Captain? Yes. Captain Aldrich flew his plane in over a farmhouse in which four American soldiers had been trapped, hoping to drop food and supplies to them. Just as he came over, a German dive bomber came in and blew the farmhouse to bits. Just how Captain Aldrich escaped when his plane exploded is more than the authorities can state at this time. Suppose we just check this report. Yes. Name? Charles Aldrich. Age? 33. Uh, next of kin? Orphan. Marital status. Single. That's all. Occupation. Occupation. He's a father, a brother, a son, a husband. He's a doctor, a farmer, an architect, a truck driver. He is all men. The principles they believed in and fought for are still living in him. From now on, it's going to be his job to stand for those things. Because when Johnny March came home, they came home too.